Hi, this is Andy Pratt, a senior partner and director of investment strategy here at Bernie Wealth Management. And I'm joined today by Bijal Patel, a senior partner and senior wealth advisor on the team. This is Bite Size Retirement, where we take common retirement planning topics and break them down into bite size, five minute pieces. These videos are not investment or tax advice, but hopefully help remove some mystery and provide a solid foundation to plan off of. Remember, while we might be explaining a topic in five minutes, don't take five minutes to make any of these decisions. So today, Bijal, we're gonna be talking about a topic that is probably relevant to both retirees and pre-retirees. We're gonna talk about tax loss harvesting, but before we dive into it, what is tax loss harvesting? Yeah, Andy, that's a great question. I think you know, just based off its name, I think it's something that people think that we do right around the holidays, especially around uh, Thanksgiving of any particular year. But really the definition of tax loss harvesting is when you sell some investments at a loss to offset some of your gains that you've realized for selling investments at a profit. The result is that you only pay taxes on your net profit um, or the amount that you've gained minus the amount that you've lost, therefore reducing your tax bill in any given year. Um, in regards to the tax bill itself, there are a couple of different ways of looking at this. Um, when you sell an investment uh, for profit, you'll own capital gains um, on the profits that you've made, as long as you've owned the, the asset for more than one year. If you've owned it for less than one year, you'll pay your normal income tax rate on any gains. If you held it for more than one year, you'll get preferential long-term capital gains rate, which can be as low as 0%, but generally will not exceed 20% for any top earners. Um, also, there's something that we want to take into consideration in regards to tax loss harvesting for ordinary income. While investment losses are often used to reduce capital gains, they're um, even used to reduce um, ordinary income. For those that are filing jointly, it's potentially you can uh, report up to a $3,000 loss against your ordinary income on any given year. Um, so those are some definitions in regards to exactly how tax harvesting works and um, what it is. But do you want to talk a little bit, Andy, about uh, the benefits of doing this? Yeah, sure. So I think a lot of us are used to evaluating our investment performance thinking net of fees. So like, how did my my portfolio do after any fees for funds or financial advice or things like that? But I think one area that is sometimes overlooked is, you know, what was my performance net of fees, net of taxes too. So this is where tax loss harvesting really can benefit you because it takes the gains that you've had. And, and if you've got a tax, this, we're talking about taxable accounts here. So trust, joint accounts, regular brokerage accounts, things like that. And you can be strategic by selling positions in your portfolio at a loss to help you pay less in taxes at the end of the year. Okay. So, you know, I, I think that's really the big benefit is you want more money in your pocket and you want to defer taxes as long as possible. And this is a key thing that tax loss harvesting does for you. So Bijal, we've kind of explained what it is, why do it? What are some things to watch out for? Yeah, there are a couple of different pitfalls. I think I can highlight three of them that come top to mind. Uh, one is the timing. As I mentioned earlier, right, people think of it just because of its name, harvesting, they think of only doing it kind of in the fourth quarter of the year itself. But really, the best time to do this is throughout the calendar year itself. Um, the other thing that kind of keeping in mind is the deadlines themselves, right? So people know that the deadline itself is December 31st of any given year. It's not the tax filing deadline for a particular um, taxpayer. Um, but as we talk about doing it throughout the year itself, there are a couple of uh, key examples I can give to you most recently here. One was back in 2020, the early days of COVID itself. Uh, March was the ideal time to kind of harvest some of your losses. The markets had a sharp downturn. That was the time to do it. If you think of currently this year in 2022, we've kind of had the first half of the year right up until June, uh, markets had declined pretty sharply. That was the ideal time to kind of doing this. So this just goes to show there's no exact science, but the markets will kind of tell you when there's a good time or good opportunity to harvest some losses themselves. Um, the second is around how to actually execute the wash, uh, the tax loss itself. And something to avoid is called the wash sale rule. And that is when you sell a particular investment, um, you cannot buy back the same investment or a like investment for 31 days within your portfolio itself. And that's the way to avoid the wash sale rule. Um, and then for investors that are um, identifying which of their investments to sell, I think it's really easy when you only have purchased one 
investment at one time, you know exactly the date that you purchased it um, and the price, and you can identify you know, your potential loss within that investment itself. But for most investors, that's not how they invest. They usually invest over time using a strategy called dollar cost averaging. So they may have several tax lots within their portfolio itself. So this is where it becomes really important to be detailed in your record keeping, um, either working with an advisor that's keeping track of this for you, or if you're doing it yourself, put a little extra attention into understanding the different purchase prices that you've made on a particular investment itself. So those are the three pitfalls I would say is one, the timing of it, two is the wash sale rule, and three is good record keeping. Um, with that being said, we hope you found this um, short video helpful. As Andy said, don't just take five minutes to make any investment decisions, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and we'll be sure to follow up with you. Thank you.